Okay, I'm going to turn our cameras off now too, Emily. Okay. Okay, you are ready to go. And we will be recording this um, so that we can share it with you all afterwards as well. Okay. So as you mentioned, we're going to start by going through kind of just an overview of the tablet. Um, I'm using an iPad, so if yours looks a little bit different and you're on an Android tablet, um, that's probably why, but all the functionality should be the same. Um, another thing, I'm going to try to remember to use my mouse as much as possible to show where things are, but um, if I forget, Lauren, just give me a heads up because I know it's hard to follow along with just my finger tapping because you can't see it. Yes, I will. But we'll get started by talking about the homepage here. So when you log on to your app, um, your homepage will look like this. Depending on how many teams you have, they'll show up right in this area here. Um, so I'm only assigned to this one team, so I'm only seeing one team there. But if you have like an in-person training team and then your remote training team, um, as long as you're like the admin or the coach there, you'll see the teams show up. Um, so I'm going to start by highlighting the top right, you'll see a plus mark. So from here, you can navigate right to the weight room mode. Um, you can also assign training and manage members. I'm not going to go into each one, but just bringing attention to what that functionality is. And then throughout today's webinar, you'll also see the create workout on the fly function. So this is something that will be available to personal trainers in the next couple of weeks. Um, so we'll go through that at the end, but just to shed light on it, if you see this, um, this icon throughout the webinar in various places, it is something we'll go over at the end um, and something that you will have access to in the future. So, like I said, this is the home page. Um, on the home page, you'll see your teams and then you'll also see forms. We'll go through all the tabs at the bottom as well. But within the forms, there's a few different options. Um, I know someone wrote in asking about like the client intake section. So this is where that would be. So you can click on a form. Um, let's say you wanted to do a goal check-in. You would then pick your athlete and it would bring up the form. So if you're training clients in person, this is a really good conversation starter um, or just kind of depending on what kind of different forms you need with your clients. We have a bunch of different options um, like the body composition. If you're doing things like that, you can go through it with them in person. Um, it's also just a good, a good way to have a conversation with a client, right? When you have this up, you can sit down with them and discuss goals and different things like that. So that is where the forms are. And I encourage you to kind of click through the different options here and see what we offer. Um, and then another question within that was about sending PDFs or um, like waivers. We don't have the option to do that directly through the app, but if you have a link for it, let's say you have a Google Doc um, with a waiver on it or something like that, you can always send it through the messages. But that's the forms. And then going through the bottom here, I'm gonna go to members next. So this is just an overview of all of your members. Um, you can see the different teams, you can toggle it to all teams or certain teams, and you can also add an athlete here. So this is one way to manage your members. Um, you can see when they were last active, but that's there. And then the next tab is gonna be workouts. So this is a good way, if you're training people in person, um, this will show you if they're coming today, tomorrow. So if you don't have another like system for how you see clients coming in, this is a good way to just pull it up and see who you're training today. Um, so that's a good option. You can also toggle at the top to like a custom date range. So let's say you want to see who's coming in this weekend. You could go Friday to Sunday and then apply it. And you can see exactly who's coming in in the next three days. You can also edit who you're seeing if you have multiple teams there, you can toggle back and forth with that. So that is in workouts. The next option is analytics. So analytics will show three different tabs. We have the activity report, we have media, and we have leaderboards. 
So the activity report, similar to the web, is going to be your tracked and required sets, and that will show up um, for anyone that's putting in information for their tracked and required sets. So that will show up here. Same thing, you can toggle back and forth between your teams or your members. So if you are like, just have those three people coming in this weekend, you can just select them um, to look at their activity report for the last week, let's say, if you wanna go over it with them, that's a good way to just kind of bring it up um, and highlight it. So the next one is media. So this is where the media that your clients upload will show up. So if they're inputting like workout videos, like their own videos, um, or any images or anything, that will show up here, just kind of in, in one place so you can watch it. So let's say Barry Bates did walking lunges. I can look at it and say, that looks great. Leave a comment. Or if he's with me in person, now I can go over it with him in person. And then lastly, we have leaderboards. Um, so the leaderboards will display test results. This is a really fun way as well. If you have, let's say you're doing like group training, um, and you have like a small group coming in and you're doing back squats that day, this is a good thing that you can display on a TV if you have that option or just on the iPads throughout the gym if that's something that you use. Um, or if you just wanna look at it yourself as a coach to gain information on like your client's one rep max, um, you can pull that up in the leaderboards. And then same thing, you can always, at the top of each one of these options, it has these toggles so you can select different exercises, um, you can add exercises, all of that. So this is the analytics tab again, lots of useful stuff there. Next, we're gonna go over to the library. So the library is gonna show you your programs similar to the web. Um, I will highlight, we had a question about the functionalities on the tablet and how they're different. So the web browser, like the builder on the web is always going to be like the most functional way to build programs. Um, that's where we have our full functionality and where it will be the most efficient. The tablet is also a great way, but it is more, more of like an on the fly kind of programming. Um, like if it is your sole way of programming, that's fine. You can still access a lot of the functionalities, but if you are used to the web and then you're going to the tablet, you will notice some differences there. So it's always best to, to program on the web when you can, because that's where you'll have the full functionalities. Okay, so these are, again, your programs that you've created that you'll see here. Um, you can click into it and view it. You can make edits to specific workouts. And then if you wanna view it for like the whole phase, so this was on calendar since it's a sign, but if you toggle over to training at the top here, you'll see the phase the same way that you kind of would on the builder um on the web but of course it does look different but you can go in here and add a day you can add blocks you can add exercises so again it does have a lot of the same functionalities it's just going to look a little bit different and not everything will be there that's on the web okay so then the next tab that you'll see up here is exercises so this will show your exercise library um, the cool thing here to highlight is if you go to the top right corner, you'll see another plus sign. From here, you can upload, you can create a new exercise and upload a video directly from your tablet. So if you have, if you're using your tablet to record exercise videos, this is just a very fast way to upload it directly to Bridge without having to first upload it to your computer um, or to YouTube and then upload a YouTube video but that's up there at the top right corner. I'll just do a little test. So it would bring you here, and then you would just click the plus and upload from my tablet, and that will bring you to your photo library. Um, just make sure you have like that access turned on in your settings so that you can access the photo library. I know on like the iPad, if you don't have access to the photo library it won't display that and it'll show as if you can only record a video live um, but once that setting's turned on like in your tablets like the tablet settings not bridge settings then you'll have access to your photos okay 
So that is the library, we have programs and exercises, and then next you'll see messages at the bottom. So the messages, again, you can see where Barry wrote in about his walking lunges. Um, that went to media because it was a picture and then it'll also show into messages. But any updates that your athletes put in, like Barry said, I used a medium resistance band, things like that will all show up in the messages. And you can also send messages here to your athletes. So it would go to a direct team or you can write to a specific athlete. And then coaches room, you can communicate with the coaches. Um, so actually here, if you haven't seen this before, you can write about a specific athlete to your other coaches. So if there are multiple coaches within your org or on a team and you want to talk about, let's say, Amy, you could write in a comment that would be seen to the other coaches if you wanted to say like, hey, how are they feeling today? If you are in more of a group, a group training setting where multiple coaches are training the same person, um, that is a really good way to kind of stay consistent and communicate with each other about what your athletes are doing. Um, if you're one-on-one -on -one training and you're the only trainer, you would probably use the athlete's room a little bit more. So those are all the options on the bottom. Um, again, I definitely recommend kind of clicking through analytics and looking at the different activity reports and leaderboards there, as well as the forms on the, on the home page. Okay. Let's see. So now we're back on the home page. Um, and I'm going to click into the actual team. So this would show all of your athletes that are on the team. You can search for an athlete or you can just scroll through. Um, it'll also show their status there. So if it's green, they're active and it will show their program as well. Um, so a lot of them don't have programs assigned. So that's why it says assign training. So you could click into that and assign them training from there or you can click into their profile. So we're gonna go to Susie Q. So with Susie here, if you see this little drop down, that would show, well, she has multiple programs. So you can see that she has two programs. So I'm gonna click into Susie. Okay, so same thing up here. If your athlete does have multiple programs, like Susie is assigned to a calendar program, which is showing up here. And it's also, she's also assigned to a playlist program. So the playlist program doesn't show up as a calendar view because it is a playlist. So it's kind of just a finish as you go style. So once you complete a workout, it will show up on the calendar. As you can see here, she did that workout yesterday. And then to pick her next workout, if she was in person with you, you would just go select next workout and you can choose through the playlist to pick the next workout. Um, and then once that workout's complete, again, it will show up on the calendar. And from there, you can review it if you wanted to. So down here is another option where once you have this feature, you'll see um, the workout on the fly show up. So it's called independent workout or workout on the fly throughout. Okay, so we're gonna go into her strength program. So she has a program assigned for today. So you can click into it. And from here, it will give you a preview of the workout. And then you can either edit it, copy it, delete it, or start it. So you have all of these functionalities at the bottom. If you were clicking into it to edit it, you would just go there. If you were ready to start, you would click start. Um, something else to note, if you are editing programs on like for an athlete and they have already started the workout, um, it won't sync it would only work for like future workouts. So if Susie hadn't started the workout yet and you were editing the workout, um, that would work there. But if she was coming in, if she had already started the workout and you were trying to edit it, it wouldn't like update live. Um, but I'll show you where to do that. So we're back here. So let's say we wanna start the workout. Once you click start, again, it will give you a preview of the workout. And then once you hit start workout, it will bring you into weight room mode. So this looks different because now we are in weight room mode. Um, and this is a good feature to use when you are training your client in person, because this is where you can actively go in and update the weights and everything while you're training them. Or if you're in a studio setting where people are putting in their own information, they can put in their own information here. Um, it didn't bring up the performance log, 
probably because I was playing with it earlier and it did that, but, oh, here it is. Okay, so yeah, it's because I already filled it out. But if you have this on, this will come up first before you begin the workout. I just wanted to highlight this because if you are training people one-on-one, -on -one, um, it is a really good talking point. So if someone comes in and while they're getting warmed up, let's say, you wanna have something to talk about, um, this is a really good way to kind of start that conversation. If you haven't seen the performance log before, um, which I'm sure most of you have, because it's usually like set on, um, this is what it looks like. So it'll ask them about their over, overall recovery, soreness, hours of sleep, hydration, stress, all of that good stuff. Um, so this is just a really good starting point for any session. It's all really good information, especially because you might need to change your client's workout based on the performance log. If they slept two hours, you're probably not gonna be maxing out their back squat that day if that's what you had planned. Um, so I definitely, definitely encourage using the performance log. It's just good data and then that'll populate as well for things you can look back on, like you can look back on this data. So if your athlete has a horrible day and you don't know why, but they filled out the performance log, at least you can go back and look and correlate the difference between like a crap workout and their performance log versus not knowing why they had a, a bad workout. So if you are training someone in person, you would just tap on the weight and enter what they did. So let's say they did 20 pounds for everything. And then you can play around with other things. They did 50 yards of walking lunges instead because we had the space. And then it'll show here, 50 is what we did, 25 is what was prescribed. Um, so it would look like that. If you have check marks on your phone, those don't show up on the tablet. So it looks a little bit different, but the data is being saved. And then once you finish, you would complete it by clicking post-workout form. And that would bring you to the RPE, the rate of perceived exertion, as long as the workout duration. So we did a whopping two minute workout. That was hard. And then you would submit and finish the workout and now it's complete. I don't know why I brought that up. Maybe it didn't like that. Okay, now it's complete. Um, so on the side here, what it just brought up, it shows, shows that Susie's workout is complete. If you are training multiple clients, this would be where you can toggle them back and forth. So I can add my athletes there, um, click on their workout, and then and then toggle back and forth. So if I wanna toggle between Amanda and Allie, they can each start a workout, and then I can easily toggle back and forth between them. Um, the option to have the split screen with athletes is a feature that's available for smaller site enterprise accounts. Um, I know some people write in about that pretty frequently, but for personal trainer accounts, you have access to view one athlete at a time. However, you can toggle back and forth. So that's what I'd recommend if you do have a group, um, you can click back and forth throughout the different athletes. So that is what the weight room mode looks like. And then to exit out of it, you would just exit weight room mode. But let's see, I wanted to talk about the workout on the fly now. So there's a couple different places where you can begin a workout on the fly, as you notice throughout the webinar. Um, so one of them would be here. If you click on an athlete within weight room mode, it'll show to build a workout instantly, which is a workout on the fly. And then you would click new workout. If you are, yeah, so if you're in the home page, it would show up, like I mentioned in the beginning, at the plus, the plus mark at the top right. So you would hit create workout on the fly, select your team, and then select your athletes. So workout on the fly is a feature that allows you to create an independent workout on the fly. So if you have an athlete or a client that comes in and let's say they did tell you that they got two hours of sleep and they feel horrible and they're there because they didn't want to miss their session and you had like this crazy intense workout planned and you know that they don't have it in them to complete that workout and you have to scratch what you had planned, that would be a good time where you just pull up workout on the fly and you're kind of creating it as you go. Um, another good option if you are a trainer who just kind of generally does your workouts on the fly. I know if you work, if you work in a box gym, like you might have the best program planned and it's all barbell stuff and there's no squat racks open that day. 
So I know what a headache that can be, and it might just be easier, depending on your situation, to write a workout on the fly as you go with your client in front of you. So that's where this feature will come in really handy. Um, I think it's awesome. I'm super excited for everyone to have access to it. And yeah, so it looks like this. It would show up as workout on the fly, and you'll have the options to add exercises, workouts, or blocks. So it's pretty similar to um, like the builder in general, just kind of like an abbreviated version. So if you have template workouts, you could click it here and just insert a template workout. Um, thing goes with blocks and exercises. But we're gonna start with an exercise. Let's say the bench press is open and we are gonna take advantage of it. So we're gonna add barbell bench press and it's gonna start a workout. Okay, so from here, if you're just kind of doing it like literally as you go, um, then you could just input their weight. Say they did 50 pounds for 10 reps. You can add sets here. So you can see here, they have the same features like apply to all, clone set, delete set. So we did that, we finished and then we're gonna add another exercise. So it's very user-friendly. Um, you'll see it's very similar to other features throughout the, throughout the platform. Um, same thing up here, you can create a new exercise, but yeah, that is workout on the fly at a glance. You can also see here at the bottom, um, you have the option to use template blocks. So if you have a block saved that you wanna put in, let's say you have a warm up you can insert it there and it will show up. If you had to delete something, I'm just clicking on the three dots here. You can delete an exercise. Let's say that athlete or client just couldn't do it that day. You can just delete it. Um, another thing to note with the workout on the fly feature is that these workouts will be independent of your program. So if you do have an athlete that's on a program and you're using a workout on the fly that day instead, it won't automatically add to their program it will actually um, like kind of start its own folder within their calendar. So the same way that I use the drop down menu to see the different playlists and workout and work calendar workout, it would show up as like workout on the fly. Um, so it will make its own independent calendar there. But other than that, um, this is the workout on the fly feature. I think it'll be really, really useful for personal trainers and we're excited to hear your feedback about it. So I think that is all that I have. I'm just looking back on my notes. Yeah, I think those were the main um, topics we wanted to hit. So if people have questions, now would be a great time to send them in and, and we can make sure we cover them. Um, maybe Emily, while people are taking a, a second to write in their questions, you could just show them on the athlete calendar where the uh, workout on the flies go. Okay. We'll just give you all a minute or two to, to type in your questions. Oh, so I guess show up. Yeah. I wasn't creating one for her, I guess, but let me see if I did. I don't know who I just played. Maybe Barry would have one. Barry. Yeah. Our guy. Okay, so it would show up here. Right under the Strength 101 copy, you can tap Workouts on the Fly, and then it would show, like, on the calendar, the Workouts on the Fly that they completed. And then you can always like save the workout and input it into your program, um, but it won't automatically do that. Sweet. So, um, okay, we have one question in so far. Um, they just asked if we could go through the athlete room versus coach room and the messages again. So maybe just speaking to the difference there again, real quick. Mm -hmm. So the athlete's room is messages that you would send just to your athletes. Um, so when you write a new message, it will go, you can either like select the entire team. Sorry, I keep forgetting to use my mouse, but I went to the top right and clicked the plus sign for a new message. And then under here, you can select who it's going to. So if you just want to send it to Austin, you can type in a message just to Austin, or you can select the entire team. 
So if you wanted to write a message to the entire team, like back squats today, eat breakfast, <laughs> and then post it there, you can send that to your entire team. Um, whereas the coaches room would be messages that just go to your other coaches. And if you selected who it's about, it would be about that athlete or about that team. So if you wanted to talk about the team to your coaches and say like they're back squatting today, make sure they warm up well or something like that for your other coaches, this is a really good feature if you do have um, multiple coaches working with the same athletes, but like the same coaches and seeing them every day. So that's a good option to communicate directly with your coaches. And then you can scroll through and see all of your past messages here. Great, thanks, Emily, for taking us through that. Um, okay, so the next question is, if we're working with multiple coaches, is there a way we could share programs from the tablet to another coach, or do all coaches in our organization already have access to the programs we create for an athlete? So um, if you do go to the library, coaches will have access in your organization to all your programs. However, once it's assigned, um, in order to go to the athlete's profile, for example, they would need to be on that team. Um, so if you're working with other coaches and someone's gonna fill in for you for that day, for example, they would just need to be on that team. We've also seen um, within the weight room, users create like a weight room account so that it's easier to share clients without needing to worry about like team access. But the library itself, um, your whole organization will have access to. Um, okay, next question. Is this a native iOS and Android app? Why not use the web version instead of the tablet? Um, so yes, what Emily is on right now is our iOS app. We also do have one for Android. Um, and we recommend using our tablet app instead of going onto the web on tablet because we've built it out to have different functionalities. So weight remote, um, for example, is more just like a tablet feature. You can't do those functionalities from the web. If you log in on the web on tablet, it will look the same as when you're on the computer. Um, and we don't optimize for the size of the tablet. So it, you could run into more kind of like complications trying to build on the web on tablet. Um, so we do put specific resources to the tablet app to allow it to work and function um, more properly for this size screen. Okay, we have one more question here. So if you still have a question, please send it in to us so we can make sure it gets covered. Um, okay, for workouts on the fly, will all coaches be able to view the workout on the fly we created for that client or athlete? Um, so this is kind of similar to team access that I was speaking about. So if I, if Emily and I are both trainers in the remote training 23 um, team, then we'll be able to see the workout on the fly by going to the athlete profile. Um, so Emily showed this before, but yeah, if you want to just go back to that same profile. Um, if we're both working with Barry, I could see what workout on the fly she did with him yesterday by going to his profile. But if I am not a coach on her team, I would not be able to see it because I can't access this team. So if you're sharing clients, um, I recommend just making sure you um, add coaches to the different teams. Okay, great questions. Um, <clears throat> we'll wait for another second or so to see if you guys have any last questions, but um, just to reiterate, we will be sending out the recording of this, so you can always reference it back. Um, I find it helpful to kind of go through um, like on the tablet when I'm watching videos as well for new features. So you can make sure you're following along and knowing where to click. Okay. 
and then keep an eye out for our workout on the floor coming out. So it should be coming out in the next week or so, um, but we will send out messaging letting you all know when it is available. And then we have our Q&A webinar um, next Wednesday as well. Yeah, that's a great one to join. Um, you can submit questions beforehand. Um, and then it's also a really great opportunity to be able to learn from our community here and see different examples of ways um, people are using Bridge and maybe they'll have a question or a workflow that you haven't thought of that could, could change things up for you. Okay, I don't see any other questions coming in, so we will wrap it up here um, and keep it out for the recording coming soon. And we will also link to the webinar that is next week in the follow-up email. So hopefully we see you all there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.